Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were open to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. Please join me in this serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Thy will, not mine, be done. Please be seated. I want to talk to you today about baptism being getting it. Now, get it, getting it, getting what? Well, the it is this, it's getting your deepest purpose for living. It's finding your life's meaning. It's getting a handle on why you're created. That's what getting it is all about. Now, that's what the gospel is. Today, we celebrate Jesus's getting it, understanding real clearly his purpose. And you and I, when we get baptized, the expectation is for us to figure out who we are as well. We have to get it, figure out what our purpose is. Now, how many of you have ever had experiences of finally getting something? So let, let me see if I can get, get you thinking a little bit. Like for example, I, uh, I attend a 12-step program that you hear the word anonymous a lot. Now, do you know what the noun for anonymous is? Did you ever see it? It's A-N-O-N-Y. M-I-T-Y. <laughs> now, that has been the hardest word for me to ever pronounce. Because what I want to do is I want to call it anonymity. Anim anim you know? And so what happens is in one of, our, one of our pamphlets, we have to read that word like five times. And I would always shy away from it. You know, I just never wanted to have to, have to say that word. Now, until I finally got it. So I finally got it. Someone taught me and he says, you know that Y? Just pretend it's an I and make it five syllables. So it's anonymity. And I can say that easily. And I can say it five or six times. I finally got it. Okay. Now, um, in our home, you know, uh, there was a time whenever we would, I would go down into our laundry room and I would look at our towel rack. <laughs> it was a mess. I mean, you know, it was, these towels were folded all kind of different ways, you know. Like, there were some towels that what you saw were just a nice fold. Other ones you saw four or five folds, you know. And I was the culprit. I had no idea how to fold towels. Or I would fold them one way one week, another way another week. And so that's what would happen until I finally got it. So, I now know how to do, do towels. And if you come into our laundry room, our towels are perfectly packed. They're beautiful. I know how to do it. You take a towel and you put it in half, then you fold it three ways, and then you put it in half one more time. It's perfect. It works. You finally get it. See? Now, uh, those are simple things. But how about in major things? Especially what has to do with our gospel today, because one of our jobs in life to be baptized, to be fully baptized, means that you get what your purpose is. You get what your individual, unique reason for being on earth is. That's what we celebrate today. Now, that's a serious thing. So how do people get it? Well, I was talking to a lady when I was in Florida recently. We were in a meeting together and we just uh, struck up a conversation and she says, I finally had a moment in time when everything made sense. 
And I thought that was an interesting comment to say to someone that she doesn't know. And so I said, tell me about it. She said, well, it happened probably about two years ago, whenever uh, I was doing my normal motherly thing. She had two kids, uh, and she still has two kids. One was, one at this moment, uh, or in the moment she was talking about two years ago, was eight years old. Her name was Sarah. And then she had a little boy who was six years old. His name was Jake. And so uh, she had a thousand things to do, plus she had her job. And so she always went through doing things last minute. So this was a Monday morning whenever she had totally forgotten about a doctor's appointment that she had made for Jakey. And so she had to delay her, her daughter Sarah from going to school. They got into the car and they're driving late to this doctor's appointment and she's in traffic. And all of a sudden she gets into her if only mindset. So she starts, maybe some of you can relate to this. If only I did have a part-time job. If only I got up early. If only I set my alarm clock. If only I set this up whenever I had more time. If only I did this. If only I did that. If only I did that. Some of you might be able to relate to that. And in the process, she's still driving and not getting there any sooner. And she heard her two little kids who were sitting in the back seat, you know, uh, kind of like having a conversation. And all of a sudden, little Jakey started coughing and, and woozing. And in his coughing and coughing, all of a sudden, he... He, he passed wind. And I don't know, you know, there's, you know what I mean? I would have used the F word, but I don't want to do that here. And so, anyway, he broke wind. That's what I want to say. So he was coughing and laughing and coughing and laughing. And so then he still kept coughing and he broke wind again. At which point his sister now is hysterical. So both of them are in the back of the car just laughing like crazy. And the mother even gets caught up on it. You know, so she's there. <laughs> and so, but she's like, for this doctor's appointment and the kids can't stop and she can't stop and so she decides to pull off and she pulls off and she's she goes to the back seat and is looking at her kids and she sees that her little boy is still coughing and breaking wind and her little daughter has this ear to ear smile that she hasn't seen for years and she's laughing right along with them and 20 minutes pass and they are just having such a time in that back seat and her mother just after she recovers a bit she says to her little son she says, honey, I'm so sorry that I have not been with you in moments like this before. And little Sarah said to her, well, I mean, we know you're so busy, but it's so nice whenever you can be with us. And she said at that moment, she learned her life's present, her, her life's purpose. She knew that what she had to do was take advantage of the moment. See? And she said she's pretty much successfully done that for the last two years. There was another lady that I became aware of recently who, whenever she was a little girl, she was one of three kids, and her mother and father separated. So her, her father left, and she doesn't even remember what he looked like. And she had never seen him, ever. So she began to be, feel as she was growing up, she began to feel that her father must have died because there was never any contact. And she knew that remotely she had an aunt, Emma, who was the sister of her father. And, and she uh, talked to Aunt Emma a couple times. And she just couldn't find out anything about her father. And so she graduated from high school. And shortly after she graduated from high school, she was starting to get involved in a church group that she kind of liked. And uh, she started to develop a relationship relationship with Jesus. But what she couldn't get was she couldn't get a relationship with God the Father. So anytime that she heard there's three persons and one God and that conversation about God the Father, that was something that she just could not accept, you see. Probably because she didn't have a father figure in her life. But she just couldn't accept that. Shortly after that, uh, her aunt Emma came to visit her. And, um, and she had just graduated, like I said, and she found out from Aunt Emma that indeed her father was still alive. And she said, oh my goodness, would you please take him this picture, one of my graduating pictures, and let him know that I would love to meet him. And so she had promised to do that. Well, the girl went through her life, one year passed, two years passed, didn't see her father. And then all of a sudden, one day, she runs into her Aunt Emma again, and her Aunt Emma let her know that her father had died. And then went on to explain to her that, that she did give him the picture. And she did tell him that this woman wanted her father to visit. And he said that he didn't want to visit because he was too ashamed of himself. 
that he just couldn't get up the energy to go and do it. He was so ashamed of what he did as a young father. So what the lady was able to do then was go to her father's grave. And so this is her moment of getting it. She was at her father's grave and she got so angry. She just got so angry and says, is this all I have left? And then she started to address Jesus and saying, why? Why is it that it's this part that the only time I get to come close to my father and he's in his grave, nothing works in my life. I will never have a father. I will never have a father. I will never have a father. And she just began to scream it. And when she got done with that, she said she heard as clear as day a voice inside her say, I'm your father. And she looked around because she heard it in such a way that she even thought that maybe someone had said that to her, but no one was around. And then she sensed again in the deepest part of her heart, I'm your father. And she said from that moment on, she found her purpose. And her purpose was to believe that God is her father. And she went on letting people know that through the rest of her life. She found her purpose. So getting it, baptism, is so incredibly important for us. How many of us really get it? How many of you know your purpose for why you're on earth? Why you're doing what you're doing? That's what baptism is. That's what happened to Jesus. So if we define, I think, baptism as getting it, probably there are a few people who are really baptized, right? Some of you might be thinking about that too. A lot of people, maybe many of us, we go through life kind of like on cruise control. We just kind of like do the next right thing. You know, so we get born, we go to school, we get a degree, we get a job, we get married or we stay single, we raise kids, we have pets, we go on a few vacations, we die with little thought of what our purpose is. Today's the day that we celebrate Jesus finding his purpose. And we have an opportunity to find ours as well. See, the good news is, if you haven't found your purpose yet, or your reason for being, or what special thing you bring to this earth, if you haven't found that yet, you have a hero who didn't find it until three years before he died. See, Jesus didn't find it until he was 30 years old. He only had three more years left. Isn't that hope for us? Whenever you think about it. And once he found it, though, you know, there was no stopping him. Once you find it, there's no stopping you. So let's just review a little bit about what that scripture says to us today. So one of the things that scripture, uh, that, uh, about this, this baptism passage, it's every gospel has it in it. Every gospel talks about the baptism of Christ. Only two gospels talk about the birth of Christ. Isn't that interesting? There are, in some uh, Syrian countries, in some uh, uh, Coptic religions, baptism is much more important than Christmas. You see? And so, so we know it's very important. We know that all four of the Gospels uh, talk about the heavens opening up and also about the Holy Spirit coming down. So all four of them talk about that. And then uh, John starts to go off in his own direction on the, on the baptism, a little bit more symbolically. And then the three synoptics say, there's also a voice coming out from heaven. And that voice says, you are my beloved son. And then two of them say, you are my beloved son. One of them, like today, says, this is my beloved son. The demonstrative pronoun. So that not only you know it personally, but the whole world knows it as well. So it's that idea. And, and all of them then end up saying, after baptism, Jesus took on his public ministry. That's what they all say. So, what's the good news here? The good news is, is that baptism by water is the beginning. Baptism by fire is the conclusion. So in other words, Jesus happened to get it both at one time. So he was baptized by water. The skies open up. He starts to hear God's call. And so he realizes who he is and whose he is. Now for a lot of us, We've had water baptism, but maybe a lot of us haven't had the baptism by fire. In other words, that baptism that helps you to get it, to find your purpose. Why is it that you're on earth? 
Why is it that you are around those people that you happen to be around? What is that special thing that you bring to the world around you? That's getting it. That's realizing your full baptism. And that's what I think our call, our good news is today. See, God wants to get in. And that's what Jesus' baptism demonstrates. And when God gets in, you get set on fire to understand what your purpose is. Now, I think I know a couple of people's purposes, you know, because people have shared them to me. And I, I, I think a lot of us know one, per, one person in this group's purpose. You know, and I told Thaddeus I might talk about him today a little bit. But I think we know what Thaddeus' purpose is. He's to help us to understand our obligations to creation. That's one of our baptismal promises. I mean, it's not pretty clear on that one. Now, you know, I'm trying to figure out what my purpose is, and I think I'm, I'm landing on it. And, um, you know, some of you who might be new don't know my journey. My journey started out with I was a Roman Catholic priest, and I left the priesthood. And um, all my life as a little kid, I was thinking about being a priest. And, um, and so I thought that when I had been ordained a priest that I would always remain a priest. I thought that. But life circumstances moved in such a direction that I wasn't able to continue on that line. And then I went out into the world and did other things. And you know, what was really interesting is that the job, what you do, is not your purpose necessarily. So you might be a lawyer, you might be a mother, you might be a doctor, you might be an engineer. That's generally not your purpose, but it might help you to understand your purpose. So, two weeks after leaving the Catholic priesthood, I started to become a trainer, a public speaker. And in two weeks, the Lord ended up putting me in front of a group of priests to preach. <laughs> that was really interesting. And what my topic was about was being natural. That in being natural, you tend to be able to lead people much better. So I was into leadership trainings, and that was the theme of that. So then my life went on a little bit more, and then um, I got done in my career. And then I still had this thing in me that said, hmm, you're not done yet. Maybe there's more. Maybe there's more that has to be done. And then circumstances led up to me finding my way into the Episcopal Church and then becoming received again as a priest. And so then I thought, wow, this is interesting how life works. You know, because I'm now at full circle. You know, so started a priest, but end as a priest, you know, that kind of thing. But that still wasn't my purpose. <laughs> Still not my purpose, but it was an avenue to get my purpose. So one day it dawned on me, and here was my purpose. And here's what I think it is: it might get renewed or reorganized, but I think here's what my purpose is. I am here to bring the good news to people in a normal, ordinary way, without a whole lot of fanfare, without a whole lot of pomp and circumstance just with this witness to you that I have experienced God in very simple, ordinary ways. And that's what I think my purpose is in life, is to help you, as long as I'm here, to see that too. Now, I think that's my purpose, and it takes a while to figure it out, but I think I'm getting it. Are you getting it? So that's the thing for you to think about. Are you getting what your purpose is? What is it that God has put you on this earth for? Maybe for some of you, it's to just simply give hope to people. Maybe for others, what it is, is it's kind of just to point out things to people in a sensitive way. Maybe for others of you, it's just to bring humor into some people's life. Maybe for others of you, it's to gently steer people on paths. Find out your purpose. Uh, it was interesting after the 8 o'clock service today, three people came over to me and says, you know, Reese, what I think my purpose is. And, and they told me about it. And they says, do you think, do you think it's true? And uh, I said, well, do you? 
And all three of them said, yes. And I said, then what you just do is listen for other people to affirm that. That's how you find out what your purpose is. So as we start 2020, clear vision. It's, I think, a goal for us. Find out what your purpose is. Get closer to what it might be. It's not the job. The job's an avenue. Figure out what it is. We need you to do that for us. Amen.